Greg Altman is now telling the story of his life and his career in a brutally honest memoir. It is called My Cross to Bear. We're very pleased to have him here at this Studio 57. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, looking at that life, uh, your son's saw what he said about you in 2009 rings true. He said, when my dad sings, he's pulling for life. He's pulling from life. He has an innate ability to draw on that despair. You think that's what it's been about, your ability to draw on the despair, uh, as well as the joy of your life, and put it into music? Uh, maybe subconsciously, but... Uh... I don't know. I I try to all this despair that you speak of. Um, I try to really rise above it. You know. I mean, like when I think back on my life, the happy the happy times right. they surface. It must be happy because you keep doing it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. You keep doing it. But I was so I was so touched by your Greg, by your book, Greg. I read it last night. I, I took a, a big chunk of the evening and read it. And you had so many life changing moments. You call it cross to bear, and you talk very um, poignantly about your brother, your brother Dwayne. You said not a day goes by that you don't think about him that he didn't really get to see the full success of the band, and that as a little kid you wanted to be like your brother. Would you talk about that? What he well, meant to you? My father was, was uh, <clears throat> he came home from Korea and picked up the wrong hitchhiker and he unloaded a gun on him. Yeah. And I was two years old. My brother was a year and 18 days older, older. than me. And uh, I guess, well, mom kind of took over as mom and dad both. Yeah. And did a hell of a job at it. And uh, then uh, <coughs> he, he was like a father figure. Right. He was an older brother figure. Yeah. And uh, like uh, when we went to that military school, I, we went in the third grade and the fourth grade. And then I went back the 10th and 11th. But you got a lot out of military school. You, you talk about in the book that if you had to do one thing over, it would be the drug use and the drug abuse. You said that you went to rehab 11 times, but you finally kicked it. It wasn't in a rehab. How did you finally kick it? Well, after receiving the award, of, the Hall of Fame award. And you don't even remember that speech you say. You said you don't even remember getting the speech for Hall of Fame because you were so out of it. Well, the next day I saw a playback of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was mortified. Yeah. It's probably the best thing that could have happened because I, uh, I then hired a male nurse to come into my house. Mm -hmm. And unlike the other 11 times, I didn't have that little spark of a voice mm -hmm. saying, yeah, we'll go in here, we'll do the dance for these people. But down the road, you know, we'll have a couple of beers watching the game, you know. Yeah. It'll be all right. I, that wasn't there this time. Yeah. And because of that, I mean, I quit smoking, yeah. drinking, snorting, everything, yeah. all at once. Good. It's the music that is you, though, for me. I mean, I, all the stories and all that you've been through, in the end, it's the music, and that's the legacy. That's it. What, what song, what moment is greatest for you? What will you take with you when you well, hear the last? Hmm. It's a lot to choose from. You're right. A lot to choose from. Which song? Yeah. I don't know. I get the, the question a lot of what's your favorite song yeah. that you ever I was trying wrote? to make it a little different, but I didn't do so. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say the next one. Really, the next one, yeah. No, but, I mean, I, we listed all those classics. I mean, this is really, I mean, this is part of people, certainly who are my age. I mean, it's part of who we were and we are, and, you know, it shaped our sense of uh, the culture. Right. And boy, it's been a wonderful ride. Yeah. Well, Charlie, uh, Greg talks about, you know, for him it's the music. For me, I have to say it's the women. You've been married six times. <laughs> and then I heard that you're, you speak to two of them, including Cher. I think that's great. 
and then I heard that you're thinking about getting married again. <laughs> do we really want to do this? I don't know. I'm worried about you. Does your mother approve? Do we really want to get married again? <laughs> Does your mother approve? Yes. Well, your mother's still, you, you know, your mother is 90-something. 94. Yeah, I'm being serious. Do you, do you really think that you want to try it again? Clearly you do. And, and why? You say in the book because, you don't like being alone. Because this is, this is my first wife. How, how so? How so? It's just... It's altogether different. Mm -hmm. I'm sober. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know there for a while, you know, I thought, man, it, it's definitely you. It's got to be you. Uh -huh. But, well, <laughs> there's a few things I could tell you, but they're just, no, that's they're okay. just it, too private. No, uh, no, it doesn't have to be that private. I just want to um, make sure you're okay. Oh, I'm okay. You're okay. I'm totally okay. All right. You're back on the road. Yes, sir. You've had a liver transplant and you're ready to, to go. Oh, God. Have I ever had a liver yeah, transplant? But and with that, I got a hernia. Yeah. Most people get them because they go and cut But you basically head. have said, if I've got to go, I want to go while I'm out on the road playing music. That's who I am. That's yes. what I love. I want to be with my, my people and I want to be singing and playing. That's it. And that's what makes it Not a bad way to go, Greg Ullman. Yes. Thank you. Love to see you at the Beacon. Thank you so much for coming. Love to see you at the Beacon. We're going to look for you. Okay. I'll be there. You'll see her. I'll be there. Believe me, you won't miss me, Greg Ullman, at a Greg Ullman concert. You won't miss me. The book is called My Cross to Bear. It's on sale now.